Hello, and year 10. So building on yesterday's work for scalars and vectors, we're going to be moving forward, um, looking at uh, how forces interact between with each other and in between objects. So the three LOs for today is stating and defining contact and non-contact forces and giving their units, describing how forces exerted on an object can make that object interact with each other, and using this to apply and explain how Newton's third law uh, can be used in a number of different examples. So what we're going to think about today is a quiz. First of all, put one to eight in your margin and pause the, pause the YouTube video now so that you can give these your full attention. I'll go on to the answers in a minute. Pause now. So, a force is either a push or a pull that acts on an object. Um, a vector quantity, we did this yesterday, is a physical quantity that has both magnitude and direction. A scalar quantity has magnitude but no direction. So, it can be something like speed is a scalar quantity, whereas um, velocity is a vector. Then, number four giving examples of each. So scalar quantities, you could add speed, area, volume, mass, density, energy, temperature, pressure, and work. Whereas a vector quantity can be force, acceleration, displacement, velocity, momentum, weight, and thrust. The piece of equipment used to measure a force is a Newton meter. And some examples of types of forces, we could have friction, drag, air resistance, thrust, magnetic, electrostatic, gravitational, force these were all in unit uh seven so just make sure that you're aware of those um then number seven is displacement is the distance in a given direction it's not the distance traveled but the distance in a given direction and lastly the equation that you should have really have used is weight equals mass times gravitational field strength or you could have put weight sorry, no, mass is equal to weight divided by gravitational field strength, or you could have done gravitational field strength divided by is equal to weight divided by mass. Remember, you can put this into a nice equation triangle, do like equation triangle, okay? Because you may be asked to rearrange that, especially on the higher paper. So, forces generally can be put into two categories. Contact forces, so that's where the object's physically touching, okay? and the materials themselves are acting, are under force. So a contact force is, where the, is a force that acts on an object only when the objects touch each other. Whereas a non-contact force is where the objects are physically separated and a force can act when, when the object, when even when they're far apart, okay? They don't need to be anywhere near or in relative proximity to each other. So just be aware of that, okay? Pause the slide, write those two down because again, they're two of the things they ask you often to write down and explain. So think about this. We're going to go through each one individually and I'm going to give you some information. So friction, is it contact or non-contact? Right, copy that, this table down because we're going to sort these together. So friction goes into the contact because actually friction is when two materials rub against each other. Okay, we can reduce friction by using lubrication. We can reduce friction by smoothing the surfaces. You can friction uh, increases energy losses, but we're only talking about forces here. The next one is air resistance, contact or non-contact. Well, air resistance is when the air actually runs over another material. So it's air particles colliding with a physical surface, so that is a contact force. Gravitational force, well done, goes into the non-contact. Now, anything above the Earth's surface has gravitational force acting upon it. So a plane could be flying in the air and it has gravitational force. It has the same gravitational force as a car sitting on a road or you sitting on your bed doing your work or you sitting on a lap stool. So that gravitational force is acting on all materials, but it doesn't actually make physical contact. When we're drawing the force arrow for, arrow for gravitational force, remember to draw it from the middle 
of your diagram. Tension. Yes, tension. Now we really talk about this in terms of rope. Okay, if they give you a tug of war example, or it could be um, within a material, okay, that's bending because of the force exerted. Electrostatic forces. Now, this is the forces between negative and positive charges. So think right back to when we did electrostatic and static electricity and using the nylon rod to repel the pieces of paper or the polyurethane rod to repel the pieces of water. It's all about getting that electrostatic charge. And remember, these materials do not need to be touching to get that electrostatic charge. A reaction. Okay, so suppose where we physically hit something and it then moves. Okay, so a reaction is a contact, that reaction of hitting something or pushing something, that physical action. Magnetic forces. Now we've all done this where we've got the magnet and we put north to north and they repel and south to south repel and north to south attract. Okay, and they don't have to be that close for that to happen. The stronger the magnet, the small the greater the distance it can be so newton's third law states that two objects okay and we do need to be able to recall this that two objects that interact with each other they equal they exert so that means that they both give equal and opposite forces to on each other so you look at the two people in the diagram they're both pulling on the rope on the rope they are both pulling with equal and opposite force we know that because neither of them have fallen over. If one of them was pulling with um, more force than the other, okay, then what we would see is movement in one direction or the other. However, at this point, you can see that no, nobody's falling over, okay. So the forces are equal and opposite. Right. So here's your first task. You do need to pause this once I finish talking, but I'll give you another prompt. You're going to read through this activity and then you're going to answer questions one to six. You are going to probably need a whole page in your book. Take the time to do this. Pause the slide now. It'd be really good. Pause this because uh, it might take you a while. Make sure you're writing those answers in full sentences so that we know exactly what people are getting. So, so the effect of gravity. The gravity is basically the force that's pulling down on the earth towards the earth. And that's why your feet are always on the floor and that's why everything always falls to the floor, never falls sideways. Now, looking at the Earth, okay, it doesn't matter where you are on the Earth's um, surface, the gravity will always pull you towards the centre of the Earth, okay? That's why the arrow that you draw for gravity always needs to be down. If they're asking you to draw um, it from an object at different points on the Earth's surface, we always draw, draw an arrow from below the object down towards the centre of the Earth. So, for argument's sake, if they ask you to draw uh, a dinosaur at three o'clock, imagine three o'clock, six o'clock and nine o'clock on the earth, all of the arrows would point into the middle so it would look like it was divided into quarters. Okay. So gravitational field. Now the gravitational field, okay, is the field of, of lines of strength of gravity as you move through away from the earth. Okay, and the figure that they really want you to remember is 9.8 for the higher paper, but 10 for the lower paper. If you use 10 as your uh, measurement of gravitational field strength, they'll be absolutely happy with that. However, just be aware that if they give you the value of 9.8 or 9.81 on the tri triple paper, they expect you to use it. So make sure you use the value that they give you, otherwise feel free to use 10. So, think about this. Uh, answer these three questions. Pause the slide. Okay. Sorry. We do a thousand times 
9.8, which gives me 9.8 thousand. Okay. Happy with that? Or 980,000? That's better. Right. Um, also be aware, this is a bit of a trick question. However, uh, where they ask you, why do objects weigh less on different planets? And be aware that different planets have different gravitational field strengths. So it isn't the fact that you have less mass. The mass of my dinosaur would be the same on the moon as it would be on Earth. However, the mass of my dino, the weight of my dinosaur would be less on the moon because the gravitational field strength is smaller. Some planets have a higher gravitational field strength, but that that's a bit more complicated. Well, it, it's lower and smaller, and I'm just waffling now, so I'm just going to carry on. So, some more questions for you to have a go at. Pause the slide. So. What we're going to do is I've got set a worksheet for today's lesson and you will email the worksheet back to Mrs. Callis and she will then check how much you've got um, right. Okay, the, you'll be able, she'll then not necessarily mark it, but she will say yes, no, you need to practice X, Y and Z a little bit more. Okay, then, thank you. Bye.